to our panel of guests. Joining me live from Johannesburg is senior journalist Manish Chant. Manish, welcome to Global Lens. We're also joined by Ambassador Shashank, former Foreign Secretary of India. Always great having you on the show, sir. And completing the panel tonight is Ramakrishnan Sridharan, Consulting Editor with News 9. Welcome, Sri. All right, Manish, let me start with you since you are yeah. closely tracking the summit in Johannesburg. Tell us what have been the big takeaways so far. Has a communique been issued yet? And there's been a lot of talk about expansion of BRICS. Prime Minister Modi has said India fully supports it. Any forward movement on that front? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, inviting me. Uh, I think the big message coming out uh, from Johannesburg is that uh, BRICS, as we know it, is poised for a major, major transformation. BRICS is going to expand, and although there were some niggling doubts before the Johannesburg summit, but now we've heard leaders speak in the plenary session, all five of them, uh, including, of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And they're all agreed, they all spoke in unison that uh, BRICS uh, needs to expand to reflect new realities, uh, to accommodate aspirations of the global south. Uh, so what is happening here, latest uh, uh, reports, latest information suggests, you know, what we know is that last night they had a retreat here. Uh, the leaders had a retreat session where the expansion of BRICS uh, figured very prominently. And in the morning tomorrow, uh, the leaders had a closed door session as well as an open plenary session. Now, in the open plenary session, uh, Mr. President Ramaphosa, South African president, uh, spoke about the new BRICS in the making. Uh, Brazilian president also, uh, Brazil was, by the way, a, a bit skeptical uh, about uh, BRICS uh, expansion. And he had, in fact, said that, you know, the idea is to have more members, but BRICS should not become the Tower of Babel, in his words. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, there was a uh, lot of people asked me here the question as well, is India supporting expansion? So now he has cleared uh, doubts about that by openly declaring that India fully supports. Now the next stage in expansion is uh, where there are consensus that the BRICS will expand, but the, the, the criteria, the precise criteria which will form the basis of expansion, still remain under discussion. From what I understand, gather from my sources, uh, right now, there is a kind of consensus over three or four criteria. One, number one, any new BRICS member uh, should be an emerging economy. This is very important so that the BRICS identity as a, as, as a grouping of emerging powers is not diluted. Number two, uh, the minimum GDP of any aspiring uh, uh, BRICS member potential candidate should be at least $400 uh, billion GDP. The third is that uh, that no aspiring member should have sanctions against them. So, But if we go by this criteria, probably in the first round of expansion, Iran is excluded. So these are some of the criteria which have been largely agreed, but I don't think they have been unveiled or made public. We don't have a joint communique yet. Uh, joint communique will be probably issued uh, tomorrow after the, uh, you know, the, the BRICS outreach meeting, which is very important because here you have more than 40 leaders right. from African countries, countries of the global south, who will also participate in it. Thank you for that comprehensive report from Johannesburg. Manish, of course, the joint communique is something that we will track with you. Uh, you know, it's interesting uh, you say that most seem to support, uh, the, in principle, the idea of a BRICS expansion, but certainly it will be much harder to evolve a consensus when it comes to actually deciding on which countries should be included in the BRICS fold. I think that is going to be the bigger challenge. But before I let you go, Manish, I can't help but ask you this question. There was the BRICS uh, business forum leaders dialogue yesterday where the uh, prime yeah. minister uh, of india spoke what happened to the chinese president xi jinping suddenly vanished into thin air he was supposed to deliver an address yeah. which was ultimately yeah. read out by someone else on his behalf many have been wondering right. did his disappearance uh, signal some yeah. sort of tension or differences what exactly happened what's the inside scoop uh, 
So I, I, I think that would be reading uh, too much. Yes, it was a surprise. It remains a big uh, mystery. It remains a talking point here that Xi Jinping coming all the way. And in fact, in the morning, he had a, a meeting with uh, President Ramaphosa, a bilateral meeting, where both the leaders held a joint press conference. Uh, so, you know, speculation can go on. Uh, but my sense is that uh, because he did participate in the retreat after that. So uh, my sense is that it could be uh, possibly fatigue. Uh, one would like to speculate that uh, it was some sort of signaling uh, but uh, one, I don't have any hard evidence to suggest because he participated. <laughs> you know, it's in very difficult to, to, to say what might be going through Xi Jinping's head. But it was certainly a curious development that he chose to make a disappearance like that, especially considering that he is right. actually on a state visit to South Africa. But on that note, Manish Chan, thank you so much for joining us with that live report from Johannesburg. We hope to come back to you tomorrow uh, for more on the BRICS Summit. Thank you.